Finland is proud of her 16-year-olds. They've scored top in science in the international OECD PISA study. Today, these young scientists at Ollery Lower Secondary School will be learning by doing a dissection. I'd, li I'd like to think that they, they become more interested in biology. Seppo Taranta has invited Nigel Bispam, a science teacher from Cornwall, to visit his class. Nigel wants to try to discover the secret of Finland's success. He'll also be meeting Deputy Head Maya Flinkman. They will review Seppo's class, and Maya will explain how it fits into a major seven-week block in the school's curriculum. The whole topic is the water ecosystem and uh, what structures a fish need to swim underwater. The main goal is to learn about fish anatomy, learning all the organs. Olleri Lower Secondary School, just outside Helsinki, educates 250 pupils between the ages of 13 and 16. The size of the school is dwarfed by Nigel Bispam's Science and Community College at Camborne in Cornwall. They teach over 1,200 pupils below the sixth form level. I'm coming to see a science lesson on fish dissection, and I'm hoping to see how a strong, practically-based curriculum enables the Finns to get some of the best science results in the world. Nigel has seen the evidence in the PISA study. 16-year-olds in the 30 OECD countries were assessed in 2000 and again in 2003. Finland's performance in science improved. She's now joint leader alongside Japan. Will there be something in Seppo's class that points to the secret of Finland's success? This is good fun. Yeah. Yeah? I think. Do you think it's going to help you learn? It's going to help us learn about fish and its <laughs> ancestors. Can you tell me what you're expecting to find in there? Uh, a lot of gross things. A lot of gross things. <laughs> Definitely a captivating teacher. He's, he's got the pupils with him. They're, e they're eating out of his hands. Seppo is teaching 13-year-olds in a specialist maths and science class. The school selects 24 pupils each year by test. You are, interest you are interested in science. Yeah. Is this your first dissection? Uh, in school, yes, in home, not. Right. Really motivated pupils, very interested in science. And this is a challenging exercise for them. It's their first dissection, but they're enjoying it and they're getting a lot out of it. Deputy Head Maya Flinkman has joined the class just in time to help Jaco with his dissection. He's one student who's not enjoying the practical work. <laughs> they thought that they had guts there, but they had stomach and a throat. But then they cut it, the stomach, and they, they got a half of the fish. And, and they could identify the fish. Also, Jaakko was, was very interested that, uh, OK, wow. I little bit helped them. <laughs> so they found it that, that it had eaten a, a, a fish. This is an extended lesson, and there's time for Maya to show Nigel the school's woodland study site. Got the freshwater shrimps, OK. She wants to explain how dissection fits into the class's seven-week study of the water ecosystem. So you've got this tremendous resource on your doorstep. How do you use it? Uh, on, on seventh grade, we come here and take samples and uh, uh -huh. identify all, all the creatures, what we get from here. And they find the algae and they find other little animals. Right, oh, what have we got here? Magic wow. fingers, three species yeah. in one go. Yeah. 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 
Hey, I'll put him back. What have we got under this? It's easy for them to, to follow the food chain and to see how everything is, is related. It's yeah. lovely to start on your doorstep with you know, the real yeah. nuts and bolts yeah. of the food chain. And it, it, it takes five minutes for us to come here and uh, then we have uh, over an hour here and they can sit as, as we sit here. Yeah. It's also waking up the love for nature. What a brilliant learning experience. Yeah. It's yeah. great. Nigel has watched the class and has a string of questions about the freedom Finns have to set their own curriculum. How long are they studying water ecosystems for? Uh, six, seven weeks. And how many lessons a week? Uh, five lessons a week. So 38 lessons, all in the same topic. I was talking to Seppo and he said he put the dissection, the practical work in, right at the beginning. Do you think that worked? Yes, yes, I, I, I think so, because then they remember when they, they have smelled the fish and uh, they have touched the, the smell, the, the smell it, of fish has motivated them, do you think? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in some way, yes, yes, because they have some feeling about the fish. Do you think all the pupils were looking forward to, to doing a dissection? Ah, there were uh, quite many who weren't too anxious. There's actually this Jacko here at the back that you can see him there. What were his feelings about dissection? Yeah, I think he would have preferred theory lesson. There was one moment when he asked for some help. He wanted uh, the eye out yes. and, and the lens from the eye, but he didn't want he, his uh, hands to get dirty. <laughs> and he asked for expertise. Who did he call over? Uh, Holt. He popped out it uh, like, like this. <laughs> I had quite an interesting discussion with Yako after that, and he was still maintaining that science could and should be taught wholly theoretically. Do you want to be a scientist when you're older? No, I don't. Any idea what you'd like to be? Economist. Economics. Yeah. That's a nice theoretical subject. <laughs> I think he was the exception to the rule because looking, looking around at the rest of them here, I noticed these two had got almost all of the organs laid out and yeah. labelled yeah. before some of the other girls were still saying, oh, oh yes. I don't like this, I'm doing it but I don't like it. It's only mine. Yeah, that sounds... This microscope that you've got at the front is absolutely fantastic. And some of the girls that were initially struggling came over and did some brilliant work with this. They really blossomed, I thought, yeah. then. They, they took out the scale and looked how old the perch could have been. How are they relating the scale to its age? Uh, it has the rings, like a tree. Oh, like a tree, has a, really? Yeah. Vaan se kala kasvaa kesällä huomattavan paljon. Silloin siihen tulee paljon semmoisia vähän leveämpiä raitoja. Did Seppo use that in his introduction? No, no. Uh, so how did they, they, how did they, they know that? that? Right. Yeah, when they found, they, they, they just looked at the scale and, uh, and then they found that, okay, there, there are something. And then Seppo ca came, that's when yeah, came. Yeah, in, in the right uh, moment there and showed them. I do get this feeling, looking at him here, standing back, he's watching very, very closely. Yeah. And, and he has a good sense to, to go there when they need him. Tää tumma pelkästään on perna. Tää kaikki muu tässä ympärillä on suolistoa. He doesn't go like this, you have to, to, to find this one. But he goes like, mm, he, uh, yes. And they then, live up to his belief in them. Yeah. He believed that they could do it. Yeah. Onks Arto mitään ongelmia? Ei. There seems to be a lot of autonomy given to the learners. Yes, yes. And, and that uh, goes with the method. Educationally, why do we dissection? Sell it to me. There are many reasons. Quite often now, the pupil youngsters, they are on computers and, yes. uh, and they, they aren't very skillful in, in cutting. It is very important for a scientist to have skillful hands. Also, just the observational 
and the analytical because they were thinking about what they were doing. All the time, yes. uh, all the time, uh, I, I, I could see the, the, <laughs> yes, the, the wires which, which went from the hand to, to brains. That's what I thought was strongest. Yeah, yeah, it, was, yeah. it really wasn't just practical work, it no, was analytical. No, and, no. And, and then they have time to think also. Uh, when you have a very uh, strict theoretical uh, teaching, Yes. Uh, they have to hear and watch uh, all the time. They ha don't have any time to, to think freely. And, and I think uh, most of the, the good things come out from free thinking. Yes. Yeah. Do you have the same kind of system in England or...? Very, very different. Oh. They might do a, a unit for three weeks on digestion or environment. But it, it's all quite short. What it doesn't give them a chance to do is extended activities and investigations yeah. like this one. And you can't sit back and relax like you do and let the pupils focus and take the time to examine in the same way. Nigel can see a pattern emerging. Maya believes in depth rather than breadth in her teaching. And the PISA study echoes that. They assessed the application of knowledge rather than testing parts of a curriculum. I'm very impressed with what you do. I don't think you possibly even realise the benefits of it because it's just what you do. Uh, yes, that's true. And I think that's what, mark, that for me, marks out what you did for these pupils as scientists, which is the natural curiosity. Yeah, and, and, and how they continued after what they were told to do and they found out new things. Yeah, let's specifically, let's talk about this group down here because they, re they found out something very special. Tell me about this group here, the girl with the blue top. Oh. Nigel! They had uh, picked up the lens from, from the eye and uh, they just put it uh, on the paper. Oh, yes. That's the lens. See, 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 see it here. Had Seppo suggested they no. look for the lens? He said that they could uh, watch the eye and yes. uh, perhaps take the, the lens out. But then the boy, he watched the lens from just up, uh, upside and he saw the pixels. You can see, you can see the pixelation of a yeah, newspaper yeah, print. Yeah, yeah. Wow, that is amazing. Have you ever done that before? No. And as a, you've never seen a pupil do that then either, no, obviously. No, so no. That's it, it, wonderful. It, it, it was that's accidental, absolutely wonderful. but it was wonderful, yes. Yeah. yeah. And that's, the, that's, a me, that's for me the nurturing of a real scientific mind. You've yeah. given the child a chance. Yeah. And that's, to do that's that. also, also something uh, to teach her. Because yes. uh, I, I love those moments. Yes. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's yeah. what teaching's yeah. all about, yeah. isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. I think this, the open ended investigation in science that you do is the essence, the real essence of good science teaching. Yeah. And I think you've got it right. Nigel has been struck by the freedom Ollery School has to shape its own curriculum. And, by the way, they use the natural facilities around them. It's been great watching a group of pupils enjoy working as scientists on an, ex basically on an extended project. And I think there's some challenges here for us because we pride ourselves in a broad and balanced curriculum. But this is a country that gets the best science results in the world and it seems to suggest that it's the depth, not the breadth, which is giving them the feeling for what it really is to be a scientist. <laughs>